Thank you. All right, good morning. This is Bernard Nomberg with another episode of Nomberg Law Live. I hope everybody's doing well out there. Good morning, Parker. How you doing, bud? Good morning. Doing great. I, th I think we've got a little better weather than you, so I hope y'all make it through those storms okay. You you do for now, but you never know this time of the year. We always get the we always get the weather <laughs> right. just like you guys do. For those of you yeah. who don't know Parker, you're going to get to know him in just a minute. But I, I wanted to, to welcome everybody to another episode of Nomberg Law Live. We come to you every Tuesday for the last two plus years, and today happens to be our 100th episode. So thank you, Parker, for joining me today. Wow, that makes me feel special. Thank you for having me on the show. This is a real honor. Well, thank you. And it has been, it's been fun. It's been a very learning experience, gotten to meet a whole bunch of new folks and just enjoying it. And I'm so glad you had some time for us today. We do a um, great job. I enjoy your show. It's, it's been fun to watch this last year for sure. Well, thank you. Thank you. And guys, my guest today is Parker Larison. Parker is an attorney in Ponchatoula, Louisiana. And he and I have gotten to know each other over the last year or two. We had, we broke bread uh, back in December in New Orleans. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. That was a great and deal. Parker, I, it was a lot of fun. And, More importantly, uh, you brought your beautiful daughters along. They're both so charming <laughs> and bright. That was really fun. Well, thank you. I need all that I can get, and they're pretty decent. <laughs> time. Next time, uh, I'll bring my wild sons with me, and then you'll never invite me back for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I've seen pictures and videos of those cute kids, and I know they, they bring you guys a lot of joy. And, and that awesome yeah, picture over your left shoulder shows yeah. oh, yeah. me when I, I think a big motivating factor right there. Beautiful family. For sure, for sure. Well, Parker, I want to get into it. I know you're an attorney in a small town, and you've got right. a lot of connections. So introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us about your, your family, your background, yeah, and, and your sure. practice. I'm happy to. Well, as you mentioned, I, I practice here in Ponchatoula, Louisiana which is the self-proclaimed strawberry capital of the world. Your time is perfect. Your 100th episode is during the week of the Strawberry Festival. Awesome. So in two days, on, beginning on Thursday, our, our festival will begin in our little town of 7,000. We'll bring in somewhere in the ballpark of a quarter million people over the weekend. Holy smokes. To this festival. It's the largest free festival in Louisiana, except for Mardi Gras. And um, so anyway, it's a small town. I, you know, obviously it's got a history in agriculture being the strawberry capital. But I've lived here my whole life, except for, you know, the few years I was away at school or working in Congress. And my family's been here, you know, forever. Um, they migrated down from Michigan, I believe, in the 1880s, 1890s. And um, my great-grandfather my great was mayor here about 100 years ago. So we love this sleepy little town. It's got kind of a Mayberry feel to it. But as you can imagine, practicing law in a town so small can be challenging because you have to get enough clients to, to feed your family. So that's something we work really hard at. Um, I, I'm, I'm really proud of my family. My mom is from out of town. She's a Cajun. So she's a, you know, a French Cajun here in Louisiana um, from a little town called Livonia. And um, just wonderful family. Her mother, who was my grandmother and real close, was a, a self-employed seamstress who was a single mom who you know, raised four successful kids and did great and was just wonderful. And then my dad's mother also lost her husband at a young age, and she was a, a single mother, one of the first female businessmen, businesswomen here in town, uh, you know, when, when that wasn't really normal back in the old days. And uh, just, you know, come from a family of really strong ladies, and uh, my dad was the sheriff for about 25 years. So, you know, kind of a family of business owners, and with dad, he started this law enforcement career. My little brother's carried that torch now. He's the chief of police here in Ponchatoula. And uh, his stepson is now an officer too. So that's pretty neat to see. And now three of us are attorneys. So I'm the kind of the, the country mouse of the group, the small town lawyer. I have two lawyers that are the brothers that are better lawyers and much more successful. One's a partner at Baker Botts in Houston and the other's a partner in a small firm in New Orleans. And uh, anyway, I'm just really proud of all my brothers and parents and, and everybody in our family. They, they really bring me a lot of joy. Well, I know that you bring them a lot of joy as well, Parker. It's, it's, it just sounds like a, a pretty idyllic setting at times, I'm sure, with so many family members around. Uh, everybody's got to watch yeah. their piece of cues in such a small town. Uh, but It's I wanna... helpful, you know, but, you know, <laughs> it, with, with child care, for example, you know, my boys are able to be, um, until they start a preschool, they, they, they're raised by their grandmothers, you know, and that, that's something you can only do when you have family near. That's right. And uh, my office right. here that's is about six blocks from my house. And four from a mama's house, 
and two from my brother's office. So, that, you know, that, that's kind of neat. That's this one upside. It's a very short commute, which I love. That's awesome. Well, we've got a couple of guests that who you know. We've got Mitch Jackson out in California is watching in, and he says, "Oh wow, good yeah." And we've got Mitch uh, is a, uh, like you. He's he's a national legend, one of the best trial lawyers in the country. Wow, that's neat. I'm so I'm so pleased that he's checked in with us for a few minutes this morning. Good morning, Mitch. For and sure. we've also got the the probably the the second greatest Notre Dame fan who you know, jo Attorney John Fisher up in New York. He's, oh he's wow, yeah, John's one of my heroes. Yeah, John, John's been a great mentor to me from a thousand miles away. What a great guy. Yeah, he is a yeah. super. Well, tell, tell, tell John hello. I've got an uncle who's a Golden Domer. So. Um, and my uh, my roommate in, in, uh, for a year in law school now works for the university, and he's a Golden Domer. A lot, a lot of friends up in that direction. John wants to know, how much snow do you get in Ponchatoula? <laughs> <laughs> John, it has snowed, I think, three or four times in my life. I'm 42 years old, but thankfully, the, the, the thickest snow we ever got, I don't remember how many inches, but it was enough to cover it up, was two years ago. So um, when, when I had my little boy, we were able to make a snowman. So I don't know if that'll ever happen for my next son, who's now only one, but it was really special. But yeah, not not often. If you those, get the slightest dusting here, they, they close the schools and it's mayhem. That's right, that's <laughs> right. Those are good memories. Park, talk about town of Ponchatoula, 10,000 people. Is that fair? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, sure. Talk, talk to us about what are some of the, the, the more pressing um, the harder things that you've got to overcome being in such a small town uh, of having right. a, such a thriving practice that you do. What are some yeah. of those things that uh, you've had to, to deal with? Well, I think the challenge for someone like me that, that's a specialist, all I do are car wrecks, is that the numbers can be, you know, a little daunting. They're not, they're not that many cars on the road. They're not that many wrecks happening compared to big, you know, uh, thriving economies like where you live or, you know, where John or Mitch live. So you really have to do your best to kind of put a fence up, if you will, figuratively around your tribe and get every case you can get out of there. You know, I've got to make sure that nobody in my life in my little town is hiring a TV lawyer or somebody from out of town who's coming in to get cases via advertising. You know, I have a community-based marketing thing. And uh, that's probably the biggest challenge. I mean, certainly there are others in that, for example, there's no law library across the street. My, my young, older brother, who's got a practice in New Orleans, he's across the street from the United States Fifth Circuit. So there's a wonderful free law library across the street. I mean, thankfully, that's not a big deal, 2019, with, with, with you know, all the digital resources we have. But, um, you know, they're not, they're not, there's no other car accident specialist in town. So finding a mentor can be difficult, you know, early in your career. Now, I was blessed to have some good ones. But I think the biggest challenge is probably the marketing thing because there's just not that many cases, and I think that that makes for a margin of error that's difficult to to deal with. Sure, sure. Well, how do you deal with some of your marketing? I know you wrote this very informative book that I assume oh, yeah. is part of your your plan. Yeah, yeah. Thanks this. for managing it. What, what, that that's certainly, and I'll, I'll show you a copy. It's called Accident Handbook. If you want to check it out, accidenthandbook.com. Anybody watching, I'll be happy to send you not only a digital version but a hardcover copy there. Um, that helped for sure, because I think what it does is differentiate us a little bit from our competitors um, as an authority. But mainly it's community focused. You know, what we try to do is stay in constant contact with our clients, current clients, past clients, and do little things for them. For example, I mentioned it's strawberry season. Um, I've got a good high school buddy who's a great strawberry farmer, and he's gonna be delivering hundreds and hundreds of flats of strawberries to my office here. Um, for Easter weekend, and we're going to give those to clients and, and you know, the, the people we care about in our life. Little things, you know, king cake season, we buy king cakes. Uh, for example, it's, it's Girl Scout cookie season around here, and I just put my assistant's daughter into the Girl Scout cookie hall of fame. I didn't know there was such a thing, but they literally <laughs> give her a, a hall of fame, you know, badge because we bought $800 of cookies and then we're giving those to our clients. So it's not just all about free giveaways, obviously, yeah. but we just try to do everything we can to let people know that we're thinking about them and that we care about them. And mostly that's done with, you know, phone calls, personalized notes, uh, things like that. We don't do any traditional, you know, what people associate with, with car wreck injury lawyer advertising, meaning no TV ads, no radio jingles, do very little internet marketing. 
Um, you know, do, I do dabble in that. I won't say I do none, but our, our spend is pretty modest. But it's but mostly, you know that mostly local, community based networking. That yeah. local touch, just the strawberries oh. at Easter, that's that sets you yeah. apart right there. I mean, I'm already hooked. Yeah, the strawberries are a big hit. But I'll tell you, you learn. Last week I was preparing a client for a deposition in what's potentially a really great case. It's a head injury case, and the you know, poor lady's hurt badly, but we've, we've worked this thing up well, and we're proud of where we are with the case. But I realized that she thought we forgot about her on the strawberries, because apparently, because the, the season will fluctuate based on the weather. And right. last year we gave right. the berries out a little earlier than this year. And, uh, you know, poor baby, she had her feelings hurt. And I told her, no, the berries are coming out Easter weekend. Don't worry, we didn't forget about you. You got to learn things like that. Once time. you start, <laughs> yeah, yeah, once you start with the berry campaign, you better bring them every year or you'll get in trouble. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Parker, let me tell you, we got some other folks who've just joined us. Morris Lilienthal, yeah. our buddy up in Huntsville. Uh, oh, wow, yeah, the Mo Show. Hey, he's, yeah. That's he's right. Great. That's right. Heidi Savoy says to tell you hello. Uh, oh, Amy Wicks hey, is, is watching with us. Um, Shelly Stant is in there. We got oh, a bunch nice. of folks Thank who tuned in to, to listen to Parker Larison today. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody. Well, talk I to appreciate us, it. Parker, with with so many family members being in prominent positions in the city, your mm -hmm. dad, and just with the history of the family in, right. in the city, does that do you ever find that to be stressful, or do you find that to be somewhat advantageous? How do you guys deal with that? Because I'm sure it comes up quite a bit, sure, just sure. given each of your prominent positions in the city. Yeah. Well, you know, the short answer is both, but I think the advantages far outweigh any challenges that it presents. Um, you know, growing up, for example, with a daddy who's sheriff, we learn that everybody's watching, you know, because while we may not know everybody in town, in, in a place like this, everybody knows the sheriff and most notice who his kids are. And so we couldn't get in quite as much trouble as we wanted to growing up without getting caught. You had to go to the next um, county or the next parish over. Yeah, right, right. Um, yeah, I remember well once, and remember this is pre-internet age in the 80s and 90s, but Thankfully. my parents were on a trip to San Francisco, and my buddies and I did a little misbehaving late at night, and my dad called me early in the morning the next day, you know, to choose my hide, and I thought, wow, I thought dad was in San Francisco, and he was, but he had eyes and ears in every corner of the parish. Yeah. So now my nieces and nephews are learning that the hard way with my brother. And, uh, you know, you, you obviously, you, my brother, this is election year for him. He's running in his fifth election. Um, my dad won six, you know, and, and, you know, knock on wood, I'll knock here. Our family's 10 to 0 in local elections, and I don't want to be the guy that messes it up, up, you know, not just for family legacy purpose, but it's my brother's livelihood. You know, he's he's been sure. a, a cop and a police chief his whole life. And so, you know, that's important to us, but it certainly helps too, you know, it, it, because it, it, people know your name a little better than, they probably would or should based on my own singular merit. And um, I'm grateful for that. It's, it's helped, you know, especially early in my career when I came to town as a young attorney to be the son of a sheriff helped, helped me kind of stand out a little more. You know, now dad always raised us that we needed to succeed on our own merit. So, you know, his status never, he didn't help me become first in the class at LSU. I had to go take those tests on my own. Um, but of course, as you know, being first in the class has never helped me get a case either. <laughs> that, that distinction wasn't hasn't been worth much practically. But um, but thanks for asking about that. It's 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 a challenge, but I was certainly one I'm I'm proud to carry that that torch. And and I'm I'm certainly not nearly as accomplished as my brothers or parents. And um, but that's okay. Well, you're, you know, well, I'm, well Parker, I'm you're also you're also an extremely humble guy, and I, that's what I'm learning about <laughs> Thank you. you. You you stand on your own, my friend. I know that, and I know those are the same lessons. <laughs> Thank you that you and your brothers are teaching to your own children. I, I get that. I yeah. get that. I, yeah. I want to I want to welcome Cece and Holly for joining us. We've got several of, of Parker's uh, fans you. and friends in the house. And mm -hmm. for those of you just joining us, uh, I've got attorney Parker Larison from Ponchatoula, Louisiana, uh, talking with me today. We're talking about being a, a small town uh, having a small town practice, but having a big practice. And, and I know that you're not limited to just your parish. I know that you're all around the state uh, and, yeah. and, and and you should be. And it's it's a very competitive field. I know that accident law is, is different than mm -hmm. someone who is just doing tax law or some of the other areas that aren't as um, known or as notable, but certainly as uh, equally as important. 
Talk to us a little bit, Parker. I don't don't want to get too deep into the woods, but I want you to share a couple of ideas, a couple of tips that you would tell a potential client or anyone out there who may have just gotten Mm -hmm. into an automobile accident. What are some things that, granted, it's it's shocking. You get into an accident, yeah. whether you've caused it or someone else caused it, you're, you're going into a mindset that you're not usually uh, in, you know, in your average day. Right. But what, do you, what kind of advice would you give to people who've immediately been in an accident? Well, of course, the most important thing is to get medical treatment as, as quickly as possible, as soon as possible. Um, and when you go to the doctor, it's important to tell that doctor about any and all symptoms that you have, no matter how minor. You know, the reason I do this type of law and nothing else is because about five years ago, my mother was in an accident. Now, she was about 70 at the time. We're very close. And I had kind of a typical small town practice at the time where I would do just about anything that walked in the door that I thought we could make a buck off of. And in fact, DWI was a much bigger part of my practice at that time. I'd written a book on it and it was my focus. And, you know, watching mom go through that process changed everything for me. And one of the things I remember best about her initial reaction to the wreck was she didn't want to go to the doctor. She didn't think she was hurt that badly. You know, she certainly felt some stiffness, a little pain, but she rated it pretty low on the, you know, one to 10 scale. And um, she would not have gone to the doctor if her husband and four sons weren't, in a, you know, bear in mind, three of us are lawyers, a couple do defense right. work, a couple do plaintiff, you know, one does both, I do just plaintiff. And then the fourth son, the chief of police, had been a personal injury victim. So everybody says, Mom, go to the doctor, you got to go to the doctor. She thought it was like an old little crick in the neck. She'd sleep off and feel better in a few days or a few weeks. Well, now we're five years later and she's had surgeries, injections, you know, everything you can throw at a spine recommended. And by the way, Mom's giving me permission to share her story. But that's what inspired this book that I've written. And so my point here is I've seen up close and personal, people don't want to go to the doctor. It's a hassle. We all get that. Um, You're hopeful that you'll feel better in a few days or a few weeks. But as you know, Bernard, if you don't go to the doctor and document your symptoms right away, and if you don't tell the doctor about everything that ails you and, and the timeline of when it began after the accident, the insurance company will use that against you later to say you're not hurt or you're not hurt as badly as you suggest or you're not hurt because of their accident. I spent the first three or four years of my private practice defending a big multi-billion dollar insurance, or excuse me, food service company and their insurer. And uh, they taught me a thousand and one ways to say no. And those good defense lawyers are going to use that against you. So please go to the doctor, tell them about everything, even if you think it's just a minor pain, and then follow their advice, follow up. And then the second thing would be obtain some legal advice as soon as you can. An injury, there, you know, no lawyer is going to charge you for the initial consultation. Um, you could talk to somebody for free who can answer your questions. You know, you can get online and get good advice. You know, this book might help. There are plenty of other good books out there. You don't have to read mine. But just arm yourself with medical care and some good, you know, advice, and then you should be fine. There, there are tons of other things to talk about after that, but I think they're sure. secondary to just acting quickly. Medical you know, a lot of legal too. A lot of times, Parker, and I bet you've seen this in your practice, people can have latent injuries that don't show for up sure. for, for days, yeah. weeks, or months. That's a great point. And, yeah. And you yeah. just like you just said, you like your mom initially thought, Oh, it's just a crick, I'll sleep it off. But you're right. If you don't go see the proper get the proper care, even if it turns out to be just aches and pains, you're not mm-hmm. gonna know from a health standpoint, which is more important, right. of course. Right. And you make a great point. And and for example, mom's case, she had a neck injury and a back injury. Well, if your neck's hurting at four out of 10 and your back's only hurting at two out of 10, you don't really notice the back that much. You might not mention it to the doctor if you're not thinking about it or, you know, instructed to tell them about everything. So you're right. One, it can be a lesser injury that you just don't focus on because something else hurts worse. Or two, like you said, it can be completely latent and, and you might not notice it at all. But the key is go see a doctor early and they can help diagnose you. And I think, you know, the sooner you can get to diagnostic, advanced diagnostics like a good MRI are critical. Not just in one, that's the best way to find out what's wrong so you can get well. But two, it's information that can help prove your case if you are injured because a picture is worth a thousand words. And it can also be a shield if you're not hurt that bad from this wreck. And thankfully you do recover quickly. That MRI can prove the absence of an injury if you're later involved in a wreck, because I have a ton of clients 
and including my own associate attorney here who's been in three wrecks since she's come to work with me, three wrecks within a few years that weren't her fault, if she didn't have an MRI from wreck number one to prove there's not a problem then where there is now, as you know, that would be a tough case to prove in, in wreck number two or three. So that, that, that's a good point. You might need to build into her compensation a, a, an Uber account. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Uh, well, that's the one thing about being a small town is uh, do, I don't even know if our town officially has Uber. Hamilton, uh -huh. the next town over, does, but there are few drivers <laughs> that have come this way. So um, awesome. Uber covers us technically, maybe, but um, they're not they're not that frequent in, in their arrival around. Guys, we're getting some great advice from Parker Larison. We appreciate you tuning in live, or if you're catching us later on, Parker's from Ponchatoula, Louisiana. And actually, Parker, we got a couple of questions here. Oh, great. Uh, I want to I want to throw to you. And let's see. Shelly asks, how do you integrate your technology with a personal touch in treating your clients like family? Fantastic question. Oh, that's a that's a great question. Well, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, she mentions there one of our biggest goals in our firm is to treat clients like family. You know, I noticed when I represented my mom because she was family and I cared about her that I did a better job and I felt better about what I was doing when we treated her like family. So one part of that is frequent communications. You know, when it's family, when it's mom, who I'm gonna see when I go over for coffee in the morning or bring my kids over every Saturday, you know, for breakfast or whatever, we're gonna inevitably talk about her case and what's going on. So she gets frequent updates. So we use technology to try to do that with our clients. Um, for example, we, uh, we, we use um, Infusionsoft as our case management CRM software. Sure. That allows us to frequently communicate with clients in a very sophisticated way, depending on their case and where it is and what's going on. Um, and then we integrate, you know, that with, with some um, other technologies. Uh, is it Zapier or Zapier? I don't know, but we use it in, in connection with ZipWhip to get uh, uh, text messages out to the clients that don't like to email. Um, so I appreciate that question, but the short answer is, several softwares and uh, and just trying to communicate with them. And, and we found that clients love the text message in 2019. They, they've often oh, prefer that to a call. They or sure do. Email. So we're trying to they do that sure more do. and more. And I find it because I use ZipWhip as well. Uh, on the run, on you know, when I'm out of the office, it's a very easy way to communicate with, with clients. Yeah, yeah. And what our clients love is they can text the same number they call. You know, they just have that one number that's on our, you know, business card or letterhead or anything else. And we as a team can can all see it when it comes in. And it's been a really neat, you know, service. We're having got another question for you, uh, Parker. And and I appreciate your time. And we're getting closer yeah, toward sure. the end of the, the yeah. discussion. I could talk with you all day, bud. But I don't <laughs> cool. You got other stuff to do. Um, before <laughs> Michael asks, this is kind of long, but let me read it to you. Before you were established and were able to afford the strawberry and king cake giveaways, mm -hmm. how did you start your community marketing? And along those lines, let me give you the follow-up. In small towns, historically, that's the home of the general practitioner. Like my dad mm -hmm. started in, in Delville, Alabama, near Dothan, mm -hmm. and he was a general practitioner, but he niched down. The question is, how difficult was it to niche down and begin to turn down cases from people yeah. who you knew? neighbors, friends, et cetera. Yeah. The short answer is incredibly difficult on a mindset level because it's really hard to burn the ships behind you and say, I'm going to do just personal injury law, car accidents. When you still have good money coming in on other cases and you don't feel like you have enough money coming in in a specialty area you're targeting. So part of it is a leap of faith and, and maybe not for everybody, but for me, it was a, a big leap of faith and thankfully one that paid off. Um, but in terms of what we start with before we have the money to get there, I think, and, and, and the good news is, like most of life, the best things in life are free. And to me, the best things in marketing are free, too. There's nothing stronger than a good old free phone call. Uh, you know, we, we, you know we, we call them gas calls. And that's for give a letter I won't, a word I won't say here that starts with an S and ends with a T. Yeah. But calls to folks like clients, current and former clients referral partners, you know, anybody in your kind of friends and family list, just to say, hey, Bernard, how you doing? I was just thinking about you when I passed through Alabama. Don't you guys love to go down there to, you know, 30A and what's the name of the beach you went to? And, you know, just a quick phone call that's about you, the person I'm calling, 
Um, and, you know, you, what you do is you take that and you, and you schedule that out a little bit. I don't want to bug you every week with a call, but if I call you every month or every quarter and keep it, you know, natural and about you, I'm going to stay top of mind. And maybe I have plugged into that call because inevitably you're going to be, you, know, you being a nice guy, Bernard, you're going to ask about me. And I may, instead of mentioning the fun thing I did with my that week, you know, I may mention how happy I am that I just won a big trial. Or just something that subtly reminds you what I do and where we are. But get in and out of that self-serving part of the call quick. So phone calls are, are great and they're free. Next to free on the super cheap, the handwritten note is something. There's a book, I think it's something like 365 Days of Gratitude or something in that ballpark. But it's written by a judge who went on a letter writing campaign when he was an attorney. To basically send a note of gratitude or thanks or thoughtfulness every day. And I tried this and it paid off huge dividends for me. Um, and there are now services you can use. I think Bond, which I was using, just went out of business, but handwritten with a Y instead of an I is still, you know, there where you can actually use your phone and a lot of the info that's in there to either dictate or quickly type out a note if you prefer to do that than to, to, to writing. But those are, note, to me, the best places notes. to start. Yeah, handwritten notes or personal notes or just short personal one-on-one -on -one phone calls, that personal touch, I think yeah, is what separates yeah. you from, from the other guys. And it really doesn't, sure. you, you have to put it, you know, we're a small firm as well, just two lawyers, my brother and me, mm -hmm. big competitive market. And you've got to really commit to doing those things that, you know, right. you're not, we're not on the TV. We're not on the billboards. You're never going to see us there, but we can do all those other things that maybe others don't commit to doing. And that sounds like your right. your firm is doing that beautifully. Yeah, and when you think about it, Bernard, you and David have spent, you know, at this point, decades creating real, genuine relationships with the people that, that can send you work. And, you know, these are the things that it's like, you know, for use the strawberry analogy. This is the water and fertilizer to your crop, you know, you did the hard work to, to meet these folks and be, and I know how involved you've been in your community, through your firm, through your daughters, through everything you have going on. This show is a great example, um, but there's nothing that can replace that personal touch. And the wealthiest, you know, brashest advertising, big shot TV lawyer can never come in and compete with that, with between you and that person that you're calling or writing. And in 2000, and the other great thing is the novelty of it in 2019, there are not many people getting a live phone call or an old style handwritten note in the mail. So it sticks out in a way that a text message or an email doesn't. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, Parker, I, I sure appreciate your time today. I've learned so yeah. much and I've enjoyed our, our friendship and I hope that we continue to, to see each other from time to time. Um, Me too. Guys, I, I, I really, uh, if you don't know Parker, you need to get to know him. He's, he's a fun guy. He's got a, a great family and a great practice, and he'll be glad to, to take you to one of many New Orleans eateries if you're ever in the area. <laughs> As you can tell, I like to eat, so please call me, and I'll do for you what I did for Bernard, which is take you somewhere that's going to serve you some good, fresh food. <laughs> we did. Great time. Well, guys, this will conclude us for today's Nomberg Law Live discussion. As always, we try to come to you at 10 o'clock Central on Tuesdays, 8 a.m. on Pacific uh, Parker, thank you again for your time, bud. I hope you have a, a you, great Lord. rest of your week. And before we get out of here, please put in the comment section, if you will, Parker, uh, your com uh, your contact information as yeah, well sure. as how folks can, can get your uh, book on accidents. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. You're welcome, bud. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.